So, what's your fancy? Ladies, how about medium and wide with dress pumps, sling bags, flats, wedges, sandals, tennis, nursing shoes, career kicks and crocs. Men, check out our dress and casual shoes, tennis, cleats, sandals, work boots and water shoes. And for children, dress shoes, casual, school shoes, tennis, cleats, sandals, ballet, jazz, christening and bedroom shoes. So complete your look at Richie's Calypso, your number one family friendly footwear store. Professionals and beauty students, get ready for the largest hair show mixer in the Bahamas. Your Delicious is hosting the second biannual hair show mixer on March 3rd, 2019 in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Inviting everyone from all the family islands. The cafe fun film night featuring fantasy showcase bottles by makeup artists, nail technicians, barbers, graders, professional beauticians, and cosmetology students. Join in the fun on Sunday night while being entertained by senior Bahamian Trey. And me, Janae Chate. Get your tickets now at Beauty Licious All Forever Wigs. Good morning, Facebook, and welcome to another great session of Real Talk with Krishna Bo. And um, I want to thank you for joining us this morning. In the spirit of love, we are continuing with our Valentine segment, hence my red cardigan, right? So, um... Last week, we had a really, really informative, dis informative discussion, and there was so much to be said that we were not able to do it all. So tonight in studio, this morning in studio, I have again with me Alex T. from Signature Choices, who is going to be continuing to discuss with me sex, sexual intimacy, you know, how do we achieve this, how do we maintain this, how do we have a um, great sexual relationship in our marriages so we're going to continue that discussion we were hot last week we were hot last week and we are going to continue with that now before we go any further as i always do i would like to mention our partners and you know ladies and gentlemen partners are very important because even though real talk is here to help and it is truly my heartbeat and my passion that Every time you watch this show, that you glean something from it, that someone hearing it, their lives are transformed in some little way, and um, that, you know, they just helps. Because of my own personal experiences, I realize how beneficial it is for us to share information, because with that information comes knowledge, and with knowledge comes power. So I want to say a great big thank you to the partners with me who who believe in what we're doing, who believe in Real Talk. And of course, I'm going to start off by thanking our number one supporter, Richie's Calypso. Richie's Calypso down there in the Churchill Square, people. They are your family-friendly shoe store. They have been in business for over 40 years. And listen, they have shoes starting at size zero. So if you have your little cute little babies, they got shoes for them. And then if you have your basketball player, size 15. They have shoes for them also. Um, the styles are trendy, current, and affordable. So we want you to head down to Richie's and support our local businesses for any of your footwear needs. Okay, so Rhonda and the girls down there, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you for your support. Our second sponsor for this morning is none other than Bull's Eye Car Rental. And that is Jardinelle and Ramon Bull. Uh, always a big, big fan of me. Anything that I do, anything that, um, any programs that we get going, Bullseye always supports me. I'm so grateful. And Bullseye Car Rental is the place to go, ladies, if you need to rent a vehicle, if you need to purchase a vehicle, if you need to rent to own a vehicle, then you need to check Jordan L. and Ramon Bo down there at Bullseye Car Rental. They are located. Um, right before you get to Sister Mary Patricia High School. So you go through the corner pass, the chateau on the green, and down there on the left, I think an old skating ring at one point used to be there. Right there is Bullseye Car Rental. And we have a new sponsor on board today, and that is Beautylicious. Daphne and the girls down there at Beautylicious um, that are having their bi-annual hair mixer. And they are partnering with us today as well. We want you to join them for what is going to be a spectacular event. It's happening 
March 3rd, so it's not very far away, Sunday, March 3rd, at the Grand Lucayan Hotel, and today, we're actually going to be giving out two complimentary tickets to this wonderful hair mixer, so I want you to stay tuned and listen for when we ask the question so that you can respond and you can have the opportunity to win yourself two free tickets to Beautylicious second annual hair mixer. Okay, so Beautylicious is located right there off of East Sunrise Highway um, next to Chappies down from Pepperport on the side of Pizza Hut. Right, that's enough, right? They got all your beauty needs, they got all your weave ladies, they got all your gels, your products, whatever you need. Check out Daphne and the girls down there at Beautylicious. And finally, Simply the Best. Simply the Best is our production company. We want to just say a great thank you to them. They believe in this show and what we're doing. And we want to say a shout out to my hubby, Clifford Bow, and Simply the Best. For all your audiovisual needs, check them out in the Mayport Building, downtown Freeport. So... <clears throat> now that I've said all of that, I am going to now get into the meat of what we're going to be talking about today. <clears throat> Excuse me. In three letters, it's going to be sex. But last week, just to recap, and I, again, like I said, welcome, Alex. Good morning. It's so good to be here. So good to be back. Mm -hmm. I mean, the time ran away from us so quickly. I mean, before you knew it, it was time to go. So we had to do a part two. And guess what, guys? It just may be a part three. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> right, right. So, okay, Alex, last week we spoke about a lot of different aspects of, of sex, sex in the marriage, things that we should do, things that we can do, um, things that can help. Let me just uh, refer her to my notes. I know we spoke. Notes, guys. Yeah, we, we, we spoke about. And, you know, sex being a beautiful thing, and that's one of the things that I want to get through to the audience before we even go any further, that sex, sexual intimacy, making love with your spouse is a beautiful thing. It, it's not taboo. Right. And I think that's what happens. Because we say the word sex, we think it's mm -hmm. taboo. Mm -hmm. Let's get it clear. Sex, it's mm -hmm. good. It mm -hmm. feels good. It's great. It's fun. You can have it. And like Miss Bo and I say all the time, we went down to the registrar. We got our marriage license. We have a license. And we want to empower all of our married couples out there to enjoy it, explore it, embrace it. And there's no reason to shy away from it. You know, um, people out there in the secular world or single people like to say, oh, as soon as you get married, your sex life is dead. No, it doesn't have to be. And you know what? There's a lot more married people out there having more sex than you think. No one's just talking about it. So we're here and we're talking about it today. Okay. Well, hey, that's what we want to, we want to clear that up before we go any further that we do not consider sex or sexual intimacy with our spouses in any way taboo. We're here to speak freely about it. Um, we're not here to, to really hide it under the rug or right. not say this or not say that. <laughs> we want to be clear with our communication because, again, this is all about sharing information and helping each other. Last week, um, you know, we spoke about some of the things that women can, because, because we're women, and unfortunately, most times when um, sex in a marriage dwindles or becomes non-existent, a lot of times, not all of the times, but statistics, ladies, show that a lot of the times it's with us. It's because the woman is no longer comfortable or the woman is not giving the sex as much as the man wants mm -hmm. it. Or for whatever reason, the woman has actually stopped having sex with her husband all together. And that's, of course, based on a lot of different things. Because as we established mm -hmm. last week, men are flat out physical. I mean, they're protectors, they're warriors, mm -hmm. you know, they're problem solvers. Everything about their existence, everything about their being is physical. Mm -hmm. Therefore, sexual intimacy with their wife is physical. It's physical gratification, it's physical release, and so they're always wanting you. It doesn't matter whether you put on 5 pounds, <clears throat> 10 pounds, 20 pounds. If you've lost weight, they want to be with you. And believe it or not, scientists have said that the the point that your mate falls in love with you and decides to make you his wife, that moment in time, he remembers. So every single time he sees you, that's who he sees. So therefore, you may come up and say, man, Alex, my man always behind me. You should be happy that he's always behind you and not running behind other women. Why? Because he still sees you as that excellent 
um, trophy that he wanted to get that he wanted to marry. And we want you to remember that, listen, your man is physical. He needs to, as Krishna discussed last week, scientifically, he has to have that release. Yes. He has to be able to release. And so he wants to be able and to do that is, with Alex, you. Alex, speaking of the physical, I mean, and it's true. We, we're not just saying that. A man actually, science has proven that a man actually needs a biological release. Right. Science has also proven that <clears throat> a healthy sexual relationship is good for a man's prostate. And um, there are several other things that we don't have the time to go into that actually proves that it's actually very healthy physically for a man, especially to have a healthy, frequent sexual relationship. And what people have to understand is <clears throat> the more you have sex, the more you're going to want to have sex, and <clears throat> the more you're more relaxed with it. Think about it. For those of us who weren't in the way of the Lord prior to <coughs> marriage. We did all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And now you get married, you know, you decide to give your life to the Lord and you're thinking, mm, <coughs> what do I do now with my husband? That, does that mean that I'm not a Christian? And I think what we want to do is we want to be able to get it across to you clearly, okay? That you can do whatever you want to do with your husband. And if you have any thought in your mind what can I do how can I do it that's what that's that's what our show based on last week we talked about all the different things you can do all the right. products you can use right. there's so much fun out there it is not taboo like we talked if you want to swing from the rafters if you want to slip and slide on the tub if you want to play with games <laughs> if you want to get a crutchless panty you want to do a massage you want to have a night out on the town you want to wear some fishnets you can do it. You can do whatever you want to do. You can have red on Wednesdays, blue on Thursdays, leather on Fridays. Mm -hmm. You can dress up, be sexy. You can have fun and spend time with your partner. And ladies, it is right. true. The more you're intimate with your partner. And let me stress, it doesn't have to be the actual physical act of sex. I got a lot, a lot of DMs and private messages about saying, we tell it, we, you know, we, we telling all these husbands how much sex they need to be having. It doesn't have to be the actual act of physical sex. There's so much different things you can do to satisfy and gratify your spouse. And I'm, I'm saying spouse, because I'm talking about the male and the female that doesn't actually require you to do what we know as sex. So you can use your hands, you can use your thighs, you can use different body parts. And you know what, if you're not too sure, as we said last week, we'll <laughs> say it again. Come on down to Signature Choices. We can introduce you to some new products. And the staff is there is wonderful. If you want to see me personally, you can make a, an appointment to see me. I'll make sure I'm there to help you. But there's so much more that you can do. Yeah. So no yeah. more hate mail coming to me and telling me I, I have your husband running one behind you every minute of the day. One of the things <laughs> I do want to draw home, Alex, with all of the things that you've mentioned, and it's great that we have a resource in you, and that's one of the reasons I wanted you on the show, because I wanted women to know that, you know, if you're having difficulty, as so many of us legitimately are, right. with your sex life, there are things that can help, and a lot of the things we discussed, like vaginal dryness. Vaginal dryness, and, yes. um, that's, um, I think that's one of the number one <coughs> issues women have right. outside yeah. of, a, of, of, of a slow libido. Right, have and products then I was about that to as well. say, yeah, you have a slow libido, mm -hmm. you know, so all of these things are going on as we get older, our bodies start to change. So, you know, we want to encourage women. And we, I said it last week a few times, but I want to reiterate it again. We want to encourage women to make sex in your marriage a priority. Because I do think this is where it all begins. And I think this is where the problem starts. Because at some point, you know, when we're courting, when we're dating, I mean, we all hot up. <laughs> I'm yes. talking about and she um, says it right we're hot up <laughs> and then you get married and I mean those first two three years I mean hey it's on then after that as with any human thing you become adjusted you become life a happens. little right life happens you get some cheering up in the mix things happen and then we feel as wives as women that we can now say to the man well I can't do it tonight or I can't do it the next night I can't do it and then before you know it um, the marriage is having Little to no sex. And I had spoken with, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm having a little issue with my throat. I had spoken with my pastor last week, and we were discussing some statistics. And um, um, some of it was shocking. And I thought I had tried to write it down. But basically, I think there was some, and I'm going to go on the high side because I don't want, to, want it to be lower than it really is. But I think out of all marriages surveyed, you got like um, 
10 or 20, I'll say 20%, even though I'm not sure that's the correct amount, but I know it's no more than that. 20%, twin, only 20% of the marriages are considered to be in a sexual a healthy relationship, sexual relationship. A healthy sexual relationship. And that sexual relationship um, means that, okay, you're having sex at least once a week. Right. So out of 100% of the marriages, so let's say, let's only say out, about out of 10 people, 20, 10 couples that we know, only two, two of couples them. are actually having sex right. on a regular basis, right. you know, a week. So right. what that says is a number of things. Either we as women are working too hard and not prioritizing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the time with our husbands. And you know what? That is where we fall down. Now, let right. me just take a moment right here. Because again, all this little hate mail we've been getting and we love you to communicate with us. When we talk about you making an effort, because the onus, unfortunately, is on us a lot more to make more of an effort, but let me speak to the men for just a moment. If your wife works all day, as you do, and you have children to take care of, as you will have to do, you then have to realize that, okay, I also have to participate in this, because what we're going to talk about a little more, too, is women are emotional. Mm -hmm. So sex starts for us before you even touch our bodies. Mm -hmm. Sex starts from our minds. Sex starts from our heart. And so sex for us begins from first thing in the morning when you roll over and give us a kiss on our forehead or as we're walking out the door and you slap us on the bottom of our backside. So sex starts from us way in advance. So when you find that you feel that your sex life is weaning because of the trials, I would say, of life or the cares of life, yeah, the cares you of life. then, as a spouse, have to then think, okay, I need to stop, I need to step in. So therefore, you know what? I'm going to make an adjustment as well in my schedule. So mm -hmm. you know what? Instead of Saturday morning, my wife doing the laundry, maybe I'll get up and do the laundry. Instead right. of she being the one to get up and make the breakfast for the kids before school, I'll be the one to do it. So I admonish you men to take initiative as well. We are talking to the women today because we are women, so we're right. talking from our and, perspective. And, 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 right. But we're I want to be fair to say that because you, we, have a, you have a part to play in all of this. <clears throat> if you want it, you got to go get it. <laughs> well, that is true. That is true. But like you said, you know, today we're focusing on um, the women, I think, mostly because we are women. So um, we're going to we're going to take a commercial break in a few shortly. But I just wanted to say before we end or before we take a break, that when we come back, we will be talking a lot about the emotional. I think we've recapped a lot of what we said last mm -hmm. week. And um, for those of you who did not watch the show, Please, you can go back on my feed. It's also on my YouTube channel. And you can watch the show as we spoke a lot more in depth about some of the physical things right. that we can do. And when we come back, we will be speaking now more to the emotional side of a woman. And how do we as women um, in marriages really, really promote a healthy sexual relationship? So, on that note, we will be right back. <laughs> So, what's your fancy? Ladies, how about medium and wide with stress pumps, sling bags, flats, wedges, sandals, tennis, nursing shoes, career kicks, and crocs? Men, check out our dress and casual shoes, tennis, cleats, sandals, work boots, and water shoes. And for children, dress shoes, casual, school shoes, tennis, cleats, sandals, ballet, jazz, christening, and bedroom shoes. So complete your look at Richie's Calypso, your number one family-friendly footwear store. Nail technicians, barbers, braiders, professional musicians, and cosmetology students. Join in the fun on Sunday night while being entertained by Senior Bohemian Trey. I mean, Janine Chate. Get your tickets now at Beauty Licious All Forever Wigs.
to the break. For those of you who missed it last week, this is a continuation, and unfortunately, we don't have the time to recap everything that we said, so I encourage you to go back to my Facebook feed or go to my YouTube channel, and you can watch the first show. Because it was hot. <coughs> it was hot. Spicy. Yeah, it was hot and spicy. It was hot, hot last. Hey, it was hot last week. It was. It was hot. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. No joke. Now we coming down. We coming, we coming down. down we're cuddling and after being intimate. Yes, <laughs> and today with this being part two of our discussion about sex, I want to speak about the mindsets of a lot of women, a lot of wives, as it relates to why they may withhold sex, because we've already talked about how you can try to keep the sex going. We've already talked about the tools that you can use. We've already talked about you making a, a priority in your marriage. But there are some women, and there are actually there are quite a bit of women. According who, to the statistics, 80% of women. <coughs> right. <laughs> who are actually intentional about withholding sex or simply made up their minds that they ain't given their husband none. No. Or at certain periods in the marriage... They would come to a place where, okay, I'm going to put you on dry dock. Right. And what I want to say in reference to that is, or I'll ask you a question and we'll spring board Off from that. that. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question as a married woman. As a married woman. As a married woman. Mm -hmm. Should I have sex with my hubby if he and I have just argued? So you're asking the question, should I have sex? <clears throat> mm -hmm. On the one hand, I should have sex. On the other hand, I'm not going to have sex. You know, we're talking about real talk here. If I've, I've just argued with my husband, I probably am not going to have sex right there and then or maybe later that night. However, I just might if I'm still feeling in a fairly decent mood. Now, we've got to elaborate a little bit here. Let me think about that. It depends on what kind of argument it is because, you know, there are some arguments where, you know, my husband will tell you, I don't know how to let it end. And then there's some where I'll just, okay, we disagree on that. Let's move on and it will happen. And I think what happens for most women is when we do argue, no, we don't let it go. We okay. don't let it go. And I'm going to say, and I'm going to say the women, they're going to crucify me now. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to keep in mind, ladies, that I'm a believer. And whenever I speak and give my views on the show, it's from the aspect or from the viewpoint of a Christian wife. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say that that's wrong. <clears throat> because we should not withhold sex Agreed. from our mates as a punishment. Well, no, we're not going to withhold the sex as a punishment. So would you That's, call it if you wanted and you give it to Well, him? usually when you have a disagreement with your spouse, mm -hmm. both of you are in a disagreement mode. And so usually, let me use my household, usually if, I'm, if we're at a point of an impasse and we're not agreeing with each other, more than likely he's not going to petition me and I'm not going to petition him. But first thing in the morning, because I'm an early bird, I may rub him on his back. What, what you saying, baby? What you saying? You know, I've slept it off or whatever the case may be. So uh, that, that's the position that I come from. Mm -hmm. And the position I'm coming from is usually that's not going to be the case. Very rarely. If your husband still petitions you for sex after you've had an argument, a disagreement, usually it's because he's over it. And men usually get over it a lot faster than women. And again, it's because men are physical. Once they've established mm -hmm. that we have a disagreement, they've established that I, I don't like what happened or what went on, they're done with it. Okay. We, on the other hand, tend to hold on a little bit longer. I'm trying to get women to see. You know, we women are very emotional creatures. But that's how we were made. That's how we were made. Yes. And it reminds me of a saying that my mommy, uh, that A, that old people used to say. Old people used to say. What's, say what she used to say? <clears throat> What's sweet in your mouth a bit of you behind? <laughs> All right? I love because, your mama, little saying. Right, because <laughs> the thing about it is, when it comes to making love with our husbands, right? Even if there is an argument, and I'm not, I mean, there are times when you have <clears throat> a huge argument. Right. Something really <clears throat> major. I'm not referring to that. But it seems like a lot of wives, a lot of women are under the impression that, you know what? If you and I did a row, or we row yesterday, or we row last week, or we row two days ago, <laughs> I ain't got to give you none of this. Right. Because I'm mad. And the problem with this is, in a sexual relationship, 
or in a marriage, I should say, you can't hold a grudge. And you can't withhold your body because it's really a form of manipulation. Right. And a lot of women, a lot of us, withhold sex as a means of control in our marriage and a means of manipulation to get what we want. When the Bible clearly says, our bodies are not our own, right. as the husband or the spouse's body is not his own. And I'm just trying to bring across the point that it is not okay. No, it's not okay. It is not okay as a wife for you to have a, a spit spat or a disagreement with your spouse and just say, hey, you know, I ain't giving it up. And guess what? You can get punished. You ain't getting this for the week. You're, because it creates a very, very bad environment in your marriage. Of course. It breeds a toxic, it, it breeds of toxic relationships and it causes right. more issues. And so right. I think the most important thing <clears throat> that women have to understand is out, even outside of it being an argument or disagreement, sex mm -hmm. itself should never be withheld for any reason. Just because you're tired, just because he didn't cut the grass, just because he didn't buy you something for your birthday or the anniversary, just because he didn't help with the children. And I, that is something that I try to talk to women about all the time. You have yeah. to understand that you cannot use it as a weapon because in doing that, you then take away the intimacy and the love and the Not affaction that. that's... That, that, it, that it encourages and right, promotes. And I think it's a good way to turn your husband off. Well, of course you're going to turn him if, off. If, he's, if he gets to the point where, you know, every time me and this woman have a disagreement, and the bad part about disagreements is a lot of times it's, I don't see something your way, you don't see something my way. Sometimes there's no, even no right or wrong in the actual picture. You have to agree we, to disagree. But women, and I'm going to say it, I'm guilty of it too, women have a very controlling spirit. So you want to control what your husband does, or you want to control how he should react. Okay. And when he disagrees with you, you get really pissed. And then when you get really pissed, you say, hey, I'm not going to give you none. And I'm trying to, to, to really, really debunk the word you use, debunk mm -hmm. that, because that is not of God. No, but I think what happens is that is why um, things happen in the relationship that cause an argument. And so it causes misunderstandings in the relationship. And so as we talk about emotional aspect, we have to then talk about the forgiveness position. The right. forgiveness post, because right. in order to get past it, you have to be willing to forgive. Right. You have to be willing to accept the fact that this is who this person is. We disagree on this particular subject right. and you have to be able to let it go. And I think the struggle for women in general, um, well, the struggle for most women in general is that we find it hard to forgive and let go a wrong if we feel wronged in any way. Yes. And all that does is continue to build a wedge between you and your spouse. And the longer you go without sex, the longer you will go without right, sex. Right, because I think that it's important for men to realize that, you know, sex creates an intimacy. Yes. An intimacy that God intended to exactly. occur between a husband and a wife. And that is why, like you said, when you go without it, you lose a certain aspect of the intimacy of your relationship. Sex is God, fire. Right. God created that to happen to keep you together. To keep it, so what happens is if sex is fire and you're not having sex, you're not, you're not creating the fire, you're not keeping right. the fire burning, what's going to happen to a fire if you're not con continually feeding it? It is going to die. And so if you are not being intimate with your spouse, right. you are going to lose uh, that desire yes. to be intimate with your spouse. And then your spouse is going to lose his interest and desire and being intimate with you. Right. And then you're going to come and ask me, Alex, he won't even initiate. Alex, he right. won't even ask. You right. need to ask him, is he being satisfied elsewhere? And unfortunately, some marriages break up because that is what happens. When right. we're not getting something at home, my mama always told me, make sure you feed your husband at home because when he's hungry, right. he's going to go out there and eat. And so that's now, the same thing we want to talk another, about. Another scenario, and this is a very, very common one. Okay, let's say I'm in my marriage. Unfortunately, I discover that my husband has been unfaithful. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reasons, everyone has their own reasons, I decide that, okay, I'm not going to leave the marriage, mm -hmm. not going to divorce, I'm going to stay in the marriage. But what I am going to do is I ain't giving you no more sex. Okay, so your question is, should, should the wife who knows that her 
husband is either presently or faithful or has well, been let's unfaithful. Speak past tense for this scenario. Okay, so for let's this scenario, he was unfaithful. You discovered it. You all, he, you decided, okay, we're going to stick this out. As far as you're aware, he has stopped that behavior, and now you're trying to get this back together. But you, as a wife, you say, well, you know, I can't trust him anymore. Okay. Um, and I'm not letting him have none of me. Okay. Well, uh, again. It is a situation that's, you know, I think we all know someone or, or a few couples that's been in that situation. And you know what happens? That is only for a season. And when I say for a season, because the woman herself, you're going to have to forgive yourself for what happened because you're not just going to blame him. What happens mostly is women think, what did I do? What caused him to step out? So forgive yourself. After you've forgiven yourself, you're going to work towards your marriage. And that requires you to be intimate. You cannot say that you forgive him. You cannot say that you want to stay in the marriage. You cannot say that you want to make this work if you are not interested and committed to being intimate. Now let's right. put, let me put this disclaimer out there. If you're unsure, go ahead and have him take a blood test to make sure there's no STDs or anything like that. Right. I definitely admonish you to, to um, get some counseling because right. that is something that's going to require continued yeah, interest and, and, and an investment. And the point I'm trying to make with that is, you know, if as a woman you have had an unfaithful spouse, I mean, it's a very hurtful thing, and my heart goes out to women that have experienced that. If you, if you decide and you make up your mind to stay in the marriage, then stay in the marriage. And when I say that, you can't just be in the marriage physically. We're okay, we're living in the same house. Maybe you're still even cooking, cleaning. Mm -hmm. No, I am going to give this my all. Because at the end of the day, to me, it just makes sense. Look, if you can stay in the marriage, you want to make the best of it. Try to do it. 110%. You, you, you want to be happy. So the only way to do that, to me, if the minute you make up your mind and say, I'm going to take this man back, or, you know, I'm going to stay with him because, let's say, his good points far outweigh his bad, you need to release that. You need to have sex. That is because, the point she's trying to say. You right, have to have sex, we're but you must. Holding the sex is mm -hmm. now going to make the problem worse. Because if he's come back into the marriage, right. he's willing to commit. Right. He wants to change. You right. withholding the sex right. is going to create another problem. Right. And he's going to feel as if, why am I trying to make this work if one of the, if one of the primary um, actions that need to be taken in this relationship is not going to be happening. Now, Alex, I am, you know, my producer admonished me earlier to look at these comments. I just looked at a few. <laughs> I have my cousin out there making a comment saying, it's hurtful for a man too, because when the wife steps out. So, I mean, what we're saying, even though we're talking about women, it's for both sides. Well, you know, I'm, we know that if a woman steps well, out, of course, I think it would be hurtful for the man. But uh, again, the same thing. If you make up your mind as a man, to stay in that marriage, to say, okay, you know what, there are more good things about my wife than bad things, and I'm not letting her go, then again, this is where the forgiveness comes in. And you know, I always reference God, because let me tell you something, God is this very, very smart, smart man. He know, I know, he made me And, know. Um, <laughs> you know, he always admonishes us to forgive. And I think I've realized over the years that one of the reasons that he does that is far better men. Because once you're holding on to stuff, you are going to poison all of your relationships. But, you know, one of the things, the only reason why um, there was a decree of divorce um, that he gave us was he said because of the hardness of our own hearts. Mm -hmm. So he knew, God knew that forgiving your spouse, male or female, because mm -hmm. of infidelity was a very hard task and then right. he went on to say that but if you decide to stay he'll give you the grace god right. gives you the grace the grace is a spiritual gift that he's given us to deal with our partner with right. infidelity and right. you know what's so funny and i want the ladies to know i've dealt with a number of men who has had unfaithful wives and they themselves at some point withheld sex from their wives so it's not just a one-sided thing not at all but what we want you to know if you've decided to stay committed to the relationship right be committed to the relationship. And be Alex, all thing in. Is, let's just think on a sensible term. Listen, you already make up your mind to stay in the marriage. Do you want to live really in a loveless marriage the rest of your life? I think what happens is society, anybody... society puts pressure 
Yeah, and person that we we become and they struggle and then we become lax we don't want to work at it true I'm, you know if you say you're going to stay in the marriage now you have to put the work in and especially if you've had a problem if there has been unf unfaithfulness on either part you know it's a healing process it's a but process you got to be committed okay and that's what we want to stress with you it is a process and yeah. we're sitting here and we're telling you you need to have sex you need to be intimate but we understand that there is a healing process that goes through. But in healing that process. healing process just as if if you if you you know break a leg or pull a hamstring or mm -hmm. you know have one of your muscles out of place you have to go to therapy and you know what therapy is they pull your muscles they stretch your leg they mm -hmm. make you walk and that's very very painful but mm -hmm. you know what happens you have to continue to do it so what we're telling you is though there's parts of you in your heart that you still feel a bit heartbroken look at your spouse and recognize that the very same person who stands before you and the DNA that they are created with and the positive things that you fell in love with and you took your vows with, that person is exactly the same. And what you also have to understand is you took vows and those vows say for better, for worse, for richer and poorer, sickness and in health, tell you both until death do you part, actually. And then you have to remember, you have to love someone unconditionally. I tell I people think, all the I time. I think that's a part of it, you, that, an unconditional Unconditionally means when your spouse is in an unlovable state. So that means you have to love them back to the condition of being lovable. It's not easy only, for us to love not, people not when only, they're nice. And not only when they're nice. I think that all of us are guilty of this. We want people to be who we want them to be. Agreed. And a lot of times, as a woman even, you can stifle or you can suppress your husband because the reality of it is I got to be who I am because guess what? God made me this way. You got to be who you are. And we have to be able to respect one another's differences mm -hmm. and understand even like I said, sometimes we won't agree, but it doesn't mean, you know, you're not, you know, as a woman, I'm not all mighty. I'm not all nope. controlling. I'm not going to always be right in a marriage. We're all flawed. So why? Right. And I'm going to need that same forgiveness. Right. Eh? If life lasts long enough, <laughs> I'm going to need that same forgiveness that I am asking you now to impart to your spouse because no man is perfect. None, None of us. We None. hurt. Men hurt women, women hurt men. And I you think, know, we I think, all do things in a marriage at certain points that are going to hurt one another. And my point is, simply because sex is the topic today, right. we have to be careful that we do not let this interfere with the sexual intimacy. Because once we start to um, allow the sex to become non-existent, Chances are your marriage really on the way down. Which happens to be one of the number one needs yeah. in a marriage for a man. Exactly. And that's so what we're focusing woman, on. You don't get a pass. Just because your husband may be disgusting, okay. <laughs> no, it's true. If your husband is disgusting and you have made a decision to stay in the marriage, you do not get, you do not get a pass from the sex. You don't get you a pass from the sex. You do not get to say, I'm going to withhold my body. Because that is contrary to God's word. Not only that, man, it just don't make sense. Well, I got to share a quick little story just, you know, with one of my customers and mm -hmm. a very good customer. And she would come into the store all the time. And um, usually we have a wider selection of costumes during the Halloween season. And after the Halloween season, she said, listen, I need you to order me some more costumes. And I said, why? She says, listen, just for me to deal with my husband right now, I need to be a different person every other day or on the weekends. And I just chuckled and I thought, this is her way of managing her sexual relationship <laughs> in her marriage. And as funny as that may be, the fact is Listen, you have to find a way. Yeah, you so she's like, works for you. I'll be a cheerleader one night. Mm -hmm. And she says the next day I'll be a dominatrix the other night. I'll be a referee with football the other night. And so you have to and, find a way listen, ladies, to keep it exciting. That, that, that is one of the ways. But look. You know, we're not telling you that's what you got to be doing. No. Right? Because I ain't going to lie. I know last I put on a costume. <laughs> the costume that I wear most is, the, is nothing. It's the, it's so the thing know, the Lord gave you. you. You know, we're just using those as examples. You got to do what works for you, what fits your personality. Yes. You know, some women, they could go and they could hop on a pole and baby, it's on. Okay. <laughs> Krishna ain't no dancer. It's, it's hard. I, I just, I'm not there. Not unless you put on some old school reggae. Then she dancing. Then yeah, she dancing. maybe. But, but overall, you know. But whatever it is that you need to do to keep the sex going, 
to keep the love because sex is a very important part of love and that's what I'm trying to get across. I actually got the correct statistics. To correct statistics. 10% of 10%. marriages are sexually active. So that means and that the 10 couples that active, I know, one couple is sexually active. And look what the sexually active is described as. Sex three times a week. Sex three times a week. All right, so let's look at it so here. 10% of all married couples. I, I, I find that so isn't that crazy that is crazy but <laughs> it's a realistic statistic so what right. we're here to do and tell you and talk to you about is let's change the statistic we want to change everything else we want to change our health we want to change our hair we want to do new makeup we want to do this new fad and that new fad and change our shoes and change our dress married people let's change the statistic yes, let's make an effort we as women we as women Listen, we just need to stop being so spiteful. Yes. We need to stop being so unforgiving. We need to stop being so unbending in these marriages that we choose to stay in. See, I'm putting the choose onus on you, chick. Because we choose to stay. Because you have a choice. And if, let's say, for instance, a man is unfaithful, you have a choice. Either you stay with the man or you leave the man. Or you leave the man. But do not stay in the relationship and browbeat the man with that indiscretion for the rest of his life and decide that you're not going to give him sex because now you're just opening the door for bigger problems. Not only that, you're making both of y'all miserable. Which is true. I, I, and I could definitely you know. say that. You, you're you're going to make each other miserable. And outside of, outside of infidelity, you know, Everyone has different issues. Some women are, are, you know, they don't keep themselves. Some women don't keep their house. Some men drink. Some men are workaholics. Whatever the vice is that caused the problem in the marriage, you have to be willing to think about it. You have to be willing to forgive. And remember, you have to be willing, if you're married, to love your partner when they're in an unlovable state. So we've talked about emotional. Right. We've talked about forgiveness. Right. Now we have to talk and stress again about the spiritual aspect of having sex. Sex is like a worship with your partner. I tell people all the time, when you have sex with your spouse, you're sharing a moment mm -hmm. and you're sharing um, time and energy that you cannot take mm -hmm. back. And there's something that just happens yeah, between like you. Like you said, Alex, there is a spiritual aspect to yes. it. I firmly believe, and I think years ago, my hubby had told me about something that actually Susan J. Wallace had said. And, you know, she was, and she was um, just speaking about how we have to be careful for those of us who are unmarried or for those of you who are single. You know, we got to be careful about having sex, premarital sex, or, you know, having sex before we're married. Because whenever you decide to open up your body to someone, mm -hmm. you are sharing a spiritual connection yes. with that person. And unfortunately for the person who may not yet be married... That, spir that spiritual connection is now there, and now you have to fight even harder to break that because, let's say you decided that person is not the person that you're going to marry, that person is not the person you want to be with. But unfortunately for you now, you have to work harder to break a spiritual connection because whenever you join your bodies as one, there is a spiritual connection that takes place and sometimes you ever see some women, I mean, the man could be the pits, eh? I ain't hating on y'all, man. Just saying. <laughs> he could be the pits, but this woman just can't let him go. That's true. You know why you can't let him go? It's you have developed a spiritual, spiritual connection. connection to him. Very true. From having sex with him, making love with him, there is a connection, and it's hard for you now to figure out how and then you ever see some people they break up and then they sweetheart they, each other they, they, whatever <laughs> because you, they're connected they're tied because, together right so the spirit because they're having sex right so you know i mean i admonish you look here if you could look here just don't please don't have the sex <laughs> before have marriage well we just it gotta, makes uh, life more complicated but but i mean if you have well hey uh, too late now too late. right but you know what so, but, but but we're changing the statistics for married people so i just yeah. got a question and the question was what if your spouse goes out there, has an extramarital affair, comes back into the marriage, and then wants you to do all these things that they did with someone else? Mm -hmm. my, you know, my thought to you was, why not? Mm -hmm. Obviously, they enjoyed what they were doing. Obviously, they did not feel that they could have opened up to you as a spouse and your partner to say, I want to explore this. I want to try this. I want you to wear this. I want you to, you know, to do this. Why not again you have a license to be a fool yeah. to be creative to yeah. be crazy you cannot hold it against 
your spouse, if they've had an extramarital affair, they decided to come back and recommit to the marriage, and, you and they to want, and you've decided to accept them. You have to then be willing to talk. I think what happens, we don't talk yeah, about it openly enough. Communication Let's talk is a about real it. problem. Talk. I yeah. want it like this. I want it like this. Mm -hmm. I heard my friend talk about this. No one's born a great lover. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm always curious, Alex. I've never gotten the right answer because I've never really had the opportunity. And I would invite a man if there's somebody out there willing to come on the show. I always wonder why men cheat. Now, I know there are, there are multiple reasons. But well, let's not say why men cheat. Let's say why people cheat. Because yeah. men and women cheat. But I'm cheat. saying as a, women, as as a, a woman, woman, I always want, and I say why men cheat, because I think for men, the reasons will be different. For women, the reasons will be different. Agreed. But as a wife, I always wonder, why do men cheat? You know, why? And I think that sometimes, even if a man does cheat, maybe that's a question that a wife can ask upon his return to the marriage. You know, why was it that you did what you did? Maybe we can change that. Or what was it that you did? You what was it that made you go into the arms of another woman? Do, did you feel that you were not being satisfied at home? Because sometimes you know we gotta keep it real. You know you're only doing your jobs at home. Sometimes women you only doing what you're supposed to do. I agree. You sometimes women aren't doing what they're supposed home. to do. Every day you have a headache. Or like I said, <laughs> the man make you mad. You feel you're not like having you any sex. Not give him any right. for like two three weeks, and this should be okay. And then when you turn around and there's a sweetheart in the picture, oh my God. You wonder what life. happened. Well, you know? th th there you go. That sounds like she's a part three already. That doesn't sound like I'm on that one, right. but we're putting it out there. So some guy's yeah, going to come and be man. honest enough to tell us. But I think what it is is that we have to realize that everyone is individual. Right. And it doesn't matter. We want you to know as a wife, yes, you may be, have some shortcomings, but everyone makes their own choice to step outside of the marriage. But we want to encourage you that if you're being committed to your marriage and yeah. you want to make this work we're admonishing you to have sex right do what do this is how I do what you have to do yes you may say to me but he no if the marriage fails do not let the onus be on, on you. you that is my point i know we got some real disgusting men out there <laughs> but if you chose to marry him and then you chose to stay with him that's yours. I'm, that's yours. That's <laughs> your disgusting man. That's yours. Keep and I'm it. I'm only saying that as long as you make a conscious decision to remain in the marriage, which in many cases I encourage you to, because you know the Bible speaks of a man mm -hmm. being won by the conversation of his wife. So I feel like as wives, as women, we have a lot of influence over our men. And if we are the wives that God calls us to me, I mean truly. Not sure. just the wives that we pretend to be when we go outside of our homes. Right. But actually in our homes, in our bedrooms, dealing with our mates. If we are who God has called us to be, I feel like in many cases we will be able to salvage our marriages. Now, right. on that note, we're wrapping up. Oh my goodness, this the time, time goes just so goes quickly. by. I didn't even discuss another aspect, but we're going to go to a quick commercial break. Then we're going to come back, discuss one or two things, and then we're going to wrap up. So... What Stay tuned, everyone. Ladies, how about medium and wide with dress pumps, sling bags, flats, wedges, mm -hmm. sandals, tennis, nursing shoes, career kicks, and crocs. Men, check out our dress and casual shoes, tennis, cleats, sandals, work boots, and water shoes. And for children, dress shoes, casual, school shoes, tennis, cleats, sandals, ballet, jazz, christening, and bedroom shoes. So complete your look at Richie's Calypso, your number one family-friendly footwear store. Nail technicians, barbers, braiders, professional beauticians, and cosmetology students. Join in the fun on Sunday night while being entertained by senior Bohemian Trey. I mean, it's Renee Chate. Get your tickets now at Beautylicious or Forever Wigs.
my faithful viewers and listen it's time for that giveaway for those of you that were tuned in at the very beginning of the show i told you that one of our partners today who's sponsoring the show that is beautylicious has two tickets for their upcoming biannual hair let me say it correctly hair show mixer it's going to be lit, people. We want you there, and we want you there so much, we're going to give away two tickets right now. So listen carefully. I'm going to ask a question in reference to Beautylicious, and the first one that puts the answer on my feed correctly, you are going to get two complimentary tickets to Beautylicious' second annual hair mixer that's going to be held on March 3rd at the Grand Lucayne Resort, okay? So, here goes. Please, give me the address of Beautylicious right now. <laughs> Who knows the address of Beautylicious? First person to type it on the feed gets the tickets. It's a two tickets, one for you and one for a friend. So, um, if you don't want to miss this, if you don't want to miss this show, here's your opportunity. I need the address. I need the address for Beautylicious. My producers are, are tuning in. And um, the first person who says that, we're going to give you those tickets, okay? So I hope you all remember that. I'm going to continue with the show. But we'll be watching the feed for whoever puts the address out there so that you can get those two complimentary tickets. Two free okay. tickets. Right. Uh-huh. Well, I think tickets are going for like $35, $40 each. So we're talking about an $80 value here, people. All right. That's an that's $80 about. value. So um, um, I don't see it yet. The, I don't see the address yet. So again, tickets of Beautylicious. Give me the actual address of Beautylicious. Can I like all these free things? We got to get Yeah, it. we, we got to get on Yeah, so this thing. is Give free, people. Away. I just I right, see no so, address yet. So but let's, anyway. Let, let's get on this. <laughs> Queens, okay. okay. Y'all gotta right. be listening. But I'm gonna get on board with this free stuff giveaway. You know, we talked about last week, like one of the things that women find um, as they've gotten older, that they find some vaginal dryness while being intimate with their partner. So what we're gonna do mm -hmm. is we're gonna ah. have a couple of you okay, ladies come on see. down today. Come on down today and we're going to give you one of our lubricating samples from Signature Choices for all of the ladies who may be experiencing um, that discomfort. Yeah. Come and try something. Compliment the signature choices. We'll give you a sample for you to try. And, ah. you, will, and you will be like, ha ha. Now I can have some more sex. Okay, great. So that's what we're going to so do. So y'all heard that? So hey. I like giving away free stuff. And right, I'm right. I'm giving away free stuff. So right. I had to get on this free stuff bag. Yeah, I like free stuff. So today <laughs> is the day that you need to come on down to signature choices and say, right. hey. I want to get some of that lube that Alex was talking about. Y'all heard <laughs> that? Get down to choices today. <laughs> it is, it is. All right, and we do have a, hey, so go get your free stuff from Alex and Oliver. Nyla or Nyjah, I, I don't want to incorrectly pronounce your name, <laughs> but I'm going to say, Miss Oliver, you are the closest one. You said East Sunrise Highway, and that is the address of Beautylicious. So I'm going to private message you after the show and I'm going to arrange for you to get your tickets okay congratulations Oliver um, you've been tuned in from the very beginning you've made some very very important comments I saw your comment where you said you would prefer for married couples that we use making love as opposed to sex so I mean I have no big issue with that but I'm saying sex because sex is the actual act of a woman and a man right. being together and I think one and of the reasons um, why we wanted to stress using the word because people consider the word such a taboo word, right? And it's not and sex is really not dirty. It's the secular world that made sex that made it dirty. That made the word sex seem dirty. Seem, to exactly. Us. That only you mistress know? have it, or women of the street, right, or right. women of brothels, and that's not the case. And that's one of the reasons why we're having this conversation. Right. And it's one of the reasons why we said, let's talk about it. It's right. not bad right. if you have a license and a right to do it. Now right. we also we, we talked. We started off the show talking about the emotional. Mm -hmm. um, and the spiritual aspect of being mm -hmm. intimate with your spouse. And I mm -hmm. want to tell women, it's not easy. I understand that. I've been married 24 years this year. Um, it's probably going to make 25. My husband always says I'm terrible. I never remember. But we've been married yeah, so long. We just married forever. 24. But <laughs> what I want to tell you is that you have to make a decision that you know what, today, I'm not going to do anything today. I'll just focus on my spouse. Or I'll spend 
instead of doing a load of laundry tonight, I'm going right. to take a break tonight yeah. and I'm going to watch a movie with my yeah. spouse and cuddle. So you hear us talking about these things and telling mm -hmm. you that you have to do it no matter what right. and you have to get past it that emotional block. You have to make the effort. And when you make the effort, mm -hmm. he will respond accordingly. We just want to stress to you not to use it as a tool. Your body right. should not be used as a tool. There's so much women who I hear talk about when I want a new car, I have Listen, sex. there was a comment that somebody mm -hmm. made and I thought that this was so profound um, and it was um, somebody told me uh, that they were overhearing this conversation and this was really profound to me they said these two women were having this conversation mm -hmm. so one of them said girl say man say my husband make me so mad today say girl we had one big blow up argument so the other the, the friend said to her so child I sure you ain't giving none of that she say huh yeah I give him some of this so she said, what you mean? You just said you all had a big old argument. She said, well, listen, eh, up here, ain't got nothing to do down there. <laughs> she said, so argument, I giving it up. No argument, I giving it up. She said, ain't no argument between them down there. Gotcha. The argument was up here. Yeah. And I thought that that was a very, very good way for her to look at it. Right. Because what, she, what, what she's saying in so many words is that even if we do have a disagreement, even if we do have rough patches in our marriage, we're not going to allow that to affect whether or not we give ourselves to each other. I think that shows that she's in a healthy sexual yes. relationship. So therefore, yes. Yes. what happens is that, again, like we tell you, if the more you do it, the more you want it and you're not going to want to abstain from it. Right. And so what happens is she's been able to re recognize that I enjoy this being intimate with my husband. I enjoy making love to my husband. I am not going to allow this, you know, little disappointment or disagreement to stop me from getting something that makes me feel good yeah. you know yeah. oh krishna always a pleasure being here yes, with you yes yes the time is done and um as we end i want to tell you ladies look it's plain and simple don't be spiteful <laughs> don't hold grudges against your mate against your mate and i say that for the husbands as well if you choose to remain in your marriage if you are committed to really being happy in your marriage see this is going to work for you do what you have to do to make your marriage work. And one of the things you need to do once you are in good health, by God's grace, you need to continue to make your sexual lifestyle with your husband a priority and a frequency. So that is our point. Okay? Stop right. being spiteful. Stop because being spiteful. We know, and don't even try to play that with me. We know we women. Hey, we experts. We could write a book on that. So that's all I want to leave with you today. My goodness, I feel like we still, there's a point that I did not even touch on. Tell I so. wanted us to talk about the detriments of pornography, which we never even got okay, to. Okay, so that's a part three and four, yeah, guys. We Stay tuned. Even, We're coming we back. We're coming back. go there. Yes. But in any event, um, I want to thank Alex again for coming. As, of, as usual, it was a very provocative, very informative provocative, discussion. Provocative, guys. I provocative. Pray, guys, that you receive some information that would encourage you in your life, that would inspire Inspire you to keep that sex life active and busy. Yes. And again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks to my wonderful partners, Richie's Calypso, down there in the Churchill Square. Then we have Simply the Best in the Mayport Building, Bullseye Car Rental, down there, down across from Sister Mary Patricia School. And finally, Beauty Licious Biannual Hair Mixer is also sponsoring and just gave away tickets to our lucky winner, Naya. Oliver. Okay, so thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to have some giveaways again next week. So we want you to tune in. Same time, same place. May God bless you. May his face shine upon you and may you enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you for tuning in. So, What's your fancy? Ladies, how about medium and wide with dress pumps, sling bags, flats, wedges, sandals, tennis, nursing shoes, career kicks, and crocs? Men, check out our dress and casual shoes, tennis, cleats, sandals, work boots, and water shoes. And for children, dress shoes, casual, school shoes, tennis, cleats, sandals, ballet, jazz, christening, and bedroom shoes. So complete your look at Richie's Calypso, your number one family-friendly footwear store. Shoes and beauty students, get ready for the largest hair show mixer in the Bahamas. Beauty Licious is hosting its second biannual hair show mixer on March 3rd, 2019 in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Inviting everyone from all the families.
Coney Island. The Cafe Fun Film Night featuring fantasy showcase bottles by makeup artists, nail technicians, barbers, graders, professional beauticians, and cosmetology students. Join in the fun on Sunday night while being entertained by senior Bohemian Trey. And me, Janae Chate. Get your tickets now at Beauty Licious All Forever Wigs. Thank <laughs> you.